the Terminator at the end of the hook goes through this, this glass building, which would be very dramatic. It's been a big challenge. We have as many people as possible prefabbing pieces off-site and then going in with cranes and setting them in and also stopping work because second unit was working on the street. I will remember the hours and the days and the weeks that I spent hanging on a hook of a huge monster crane and get dragged behind this crane and get smashed into things with this crane. I mean, it was like unbelievable scenes, but it was really close calls many times. The crane driver will be taking this 140-ton crane, uh, reaching the arm out to one side and taking it through this entire building. The building they've got here has taken them two weeks to build, and it's designed that the arm goes through the building and as I'm going for it the whole thing's collapsing. It's a fairly big structure so we've had to use explosives. We'll have the charges going off in the columns as the crane passes through each one. Nothing stops that crane and there's no people so we're just going for it. There's a huge amount of potential for things to go wrong. The way we approach it really is, is through uh, informing everyone very clearly what's happening, rehearsing. We have uh, put a huge amount of effort into our safety meetings. And when they purposely build a complete building for you to destroy it, you can't help but feel good once you've done it sort of thing, you know, it's, it's just great. certain sequences in the movie that were unsafe for any actor to do. There was a really cool idea, Florian Ryan, of well, maybe at the end, you know, the crane should flip, and then she's inside it. It's like, okay, well, how are we gonna do that? Well, you know, we just flip the crane. Wait a minute, this crane is huge, and it costs a lot of money. There was kind of a lot of back and forth with the client about this sequence. Originally, uh, they had thought, since they had purchased the full-size champion crane in the, in the first place, they figured that they could just use the real crane and maybe flip that. But they quickly came to realize that flipping a full-size crane in the streets of Los Angeles was a liability hazard they really didn't want to deal with. And basically, you know, they all looked at me and I said, well, I guess we can do it digitally. I mean, we can, uh, you know, we can model the crane. We have plenty of pictures. So we modeled it in the computer and painted it and animated it so that the, everything would bounce and the wheels would hit, you know, in a way that you believe. And uh, when we flipped it over, it had to break apart and crash. So what we would start with is we got background plates of basically an empty street in which the crane was going to go. And they simulated a camera move to kind of follow the crane flipping up and over. And this shot would be the crane impacting the ground and this shot was going to be the crane coming towards camera and eventually wiping camera out. To minimize our headache in coming up with an accurate animation and simulation for this thing, uh, we blocked in uh, the entire four-shot sequence uh, using, you know, using a very simple model and just hand animating and doing very simple simulations to get a client buy-off on how the crane would flip. And once that's decided, then we go to work creating it and making it look photorealistic. And then we start getting uh, um, incarnations of it on film and we look at it and we go well we believe this part of it we don't believe that part of it this represents kind of our first take with the full-size real model and we've started adding in some extra touches like like uh, you know little bits and pieces falling off a little bit of extra vibration in the crane boom and the cab so this is the simulations are starting to progress a little bit more 
You can see we're starting to add a lot of debris falling off the crane. Actually, considerably more debris than would ever fall off in a real vehicle that flips through the air. It's like, it's like every single piece comes unglued the minute it starts to fly over. If you were to like actually carefully count them all, there's probably more wheels flying through the air than the crane even has on it. So it's just way over the top, but it just looks so much better because of it. These are the final shots in the sequence where you can see the finalized, all of the elements have come together. The compositing crew has, has finessed all the various dust elements and debris elements and spark elements and flame and explosion elements. Got all the depth in the compositing working. Put some camera shake in there so you really feel that explosion. The pavement breakup's been pretty much finalized. And both we and the client were very, very happy with the shots when they were done. The great art in visual effects nowadays is making the audience forget that it's a visual effect. They just think that they're seeing something that's really happening. And they're not aware that there were 500 technicians that went to the creation of one, what might apparently be a rather simple shot that you're looking at. The director for these four shots is he really wanted it to be as realistic, I mean, within kind of artistic reason, but he really wanted it to be real. He didn't want it to give itself away as a CG crane. And that, that made our job that much more interesting, but also that much more difficult. We showed it to our PR, PR department and she didn't know it was a CG crane. And uh, she said, oh, that's just a CG Arnold on top of the truck. It's, it's something that is, uh, that is challenging and it's, and it's uh, out there and it's, it's, it's really difficult to do and nobody else has done it or that I have seen. I'm sure they've done you know, lots of other things, but no cranes. <laughs>